intercession that was coming here, and I thank God for that. Because there's there is a a, uh, a group here that's that's touching the heart of God and crying out to God, and that is very special. And uh, I want to say thank you to all of you. Um, uh, I've changed around and everyone keeps asking me, what are you going to share? I, Abby keeps even asking, what are you going to share? I just keep saying, I don't know. And then I had a plan and then that plan went. The, that, that also is no longer in existence. And then um, while I was here, I, you know, we went to the Solomon Islands, and I came from a country that is 24/7 news. We have a news broadcast, so we listen. To, you know, it's every hour. We have our phones; they give us alerts um, whenever they feel we need to know something in Israel. We get an alert, and then I also have on my phone a rocket alert, and I also have uh, because of where we live. Uh, an alert for terrorist infiltration. So we have, we're just always knowing and be here. So we go to the Solomon Islands. There's no alert. There's no phone. There's no internet. There's no news every hour. There's no, it doesn't matter where you go. Every, you know, everybody knows what's going on and talking. Uh, we're a country that's aware of what's happening around us, we have to be. We have to be because of our history, and things can change in our uh, our country in the snap of a finger. And I thought, wow, I'm in the Solomon Islands, and we could be at war, and I wouldn't know it. And that is very odd. That would be very odd. And so, but when I came back, I knew that something, and that right before we left, that there was a horrible death toll in Maui from this fire. But I hadn't really seen the full about it, and I had a, I had a friend I, in uh, Maui, a Jewish believer. I had sent her before I went, when I had internet, I sent her a little message saying, are you okay? And she sent me, I'm okay. And so now, and there's a fire in Canada, and um, I have another friend, her name is, uh, a native friend, her name is Linda, and she's in the path of all this. And, I'm, and so, they did a little, I saw on the, the news here in, in Keynes, a whole little report on Maui, and we heard about what's happening in the evacuation to Calgary. And I sat there, and I, I felt like in my heart of hearts, for years we've talked about, as we enter into the last days of the last days, because we already entered the last days a long time ago, but that we entered the last days of the last days of the as we're enduring to the end, um, that the, there would be great darkness around us. But I've always known in my heart that there would be this great light that would be burning forth together when you, uh, when you do Haftalah on the Shabbat evening and you have the three candles and it, it, when they're all together, there's a, 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 a real, it, and light just, darkness is like this, but there's darkness, but a great light. And when we were in the Solomon Islands, electricity goes on and off. And uh, we were in a meeting, and Deborah and I both, we listened, the worship did stop. Total darkness. Total darkness, but that worship penetrated any darkness. Um, and that is where we are, and that's what I thought. I said, okay, we always said that's what we would be. And I realized, I said, oh Lord, that's not where we will be or would be, but it's where we are. <laughs> this is where we are now. And to be the light, because I realized in my heart of hearts that this is it. And, and this, this is what God wants to do. And I hear Avi telling people, say, fulfill this, share the gospel, bring the light of Yeshua, because right now people are lost and dying. And in and, and Maui, they didn't have much time. And the only hope we have is the Messiah of Israel, yeah. is our God, the God of Israel. And now more than ever, in praying for your nations, the nations, it's really, this is a vital time to not pull back or turn away, but turn towards 
the God of Israel and the, and the, the people of Israel because of where that last part we're going we're going to go through. And I'm so thankful to the Lord for His mercy and grace because in the natural, I don't think any of us could do this. But in Him, we will. And together, we will. And walking in the unity He's called us into that they'll know us by our love for one another. And one of the things that I'm all really hesitant almost to say this, but it's been in my heart for ever since the corona came out. And one of the things I felt as a body is that we didn't do well. We didn't do well as a body, but God still loved us. And I'll never forget, uh, we had a, a women's gathering, uh, Norma Sarvis and myself, for six years we had national Israeli women gatherings. And in Corona, we thought, how can we do it and not break the law and have every woman be able to come? So we did it, three of them, which is in different parts of the country, because when we started, you had mass outside, you could gather 50 outside, and when we started it, they released the mask, and they increased the numbers. Every time we would have it, would, they would increase us. And women who hadn't seen each other for a whole year, women in a, there's a leading nursing home, saw each other, and there was such a joy to see one another and pray together. I'll never forget, Norma had a message, and she said, love is greater than our opinions. Love is greater, and that was the message to the body of Messiah in Israel. I'll never forget Carolyn Hyde. That on one of them, we were in a goat farm and under tents outside in the hottest day of the year. Uh, like 40 Celsius. Anyway, and she came up to me. She said, "Chaya," because everybody there had different opinions, and everybody had different thoughts about what they were going to do. And I have a good friend who's an Arab Christian, and she loves Israel and loves the designated Jews. And she said, hi, all the Arab believers are, we're just shaking our head, all you Jews, because you're just going after each other to, over this whole issue. And I remember Carolyn came and she said, you know, Chaya, the Lord is speaking to me and saying, it's not whether or not you take the vaccine. It's how you, we were treating one another. And so that's, I just, I feel in my heart as a body of Messiah that to really ask the Lord to say, God, we're sorry. We're sorry we didn't do well in this. And Lord, I ask that you strengthen the body in Australia and in Israel. That as we walk through the next thing, we, whatever we, we have to walk through, that we will walk through as one. And that our testimony to the nation, the Australians and the Aboriginal people here of Australia, their testimony will be their love for one another that will shape the nation. And our testimony in Israel will be our love for one another. And I just speak that over all of us and declare and ask you, Lord, I thank you that you not given up on us as a body. I thank you that you have shown great mercy. We're really sorry we, we broke your heart. And Lord, we just want to be walk rightly before you in every way. Our nation, and I just pray that with this, Lord, that Australia will wholeheartedly um, not walk away from what you have imparted to them in, in about Israel. That their government and their people will walk towards you in the land of Israel and will make the right decision. And the, their hearts will be so turned that, Lord, you will intervene. You heard the prayer today of this remnant people whose hearts are after you. And, Lord, that you will answer them and that we, the Australia, will declare we will follow the God of Israel and we will acknowledge that this is your land and your people in the name of Yeshua. Amen. And that's, okay. Um, where's my Bible? Ah, right here. So 
um, if I can, I have, I don't know if you guys know about this Bible. It's a Messianic Jewish family Bible, the Tree of Life version. Has it, have you come? Okay, this is what, we love this. Um, and I keep checking with Avi and uh, the Hebrew person here, really strong, to make sure and check. Because uh, one thing about the Israelis, I, I find that if you make a mistake in that Hebrew, they are... <laughs> <laughs> so, just so you know, but, um, and so uh, it's a beautiful, uh, and when um, you were reading from one, uh, one uh, let's see, no, it was 48. Uh, Psalm, Tehi. Um, Ken 48, and you were talking about walk about Zion, go around her, count her towers, consider her ramparts, go through her palaces, so you may describe it to the next generation. For the, this God is our God forever and ever. He will guide us to the end. And he will guide us to the end. But the one that stood out, jumped to me, is that when you're walking about Zion, you, and you consider everything around is you, you may describe it to the next generation because our God is a God of generations you know I, I was reading in my Thai uh, Matthew all the in, in English we use the English terminology genealogy but those are generations and God has promises and favor uh, on their generations there's a promise that he holds from here. There's the prayers of, of mama and the, the children, they're here. And see, God promises that for the children and the children and the children so we can hold on to that for our children. So whatever our grandchildren, so whatever the enemy is trying to take away or steal or, or uh, destroy, that, that's where we can say no because of this a uh, generational blessing from God that he gives us and desire that. And that's how, um, you know, I look back, um, many of you may not know, but in the late 1700s, early 1800s, the largest Jewish community in the United States was in the South. Not the North, the South. Uh, there was, um, you look in Charleston, South Savannah, I mean, there was the largest Jewish community was in the South. It wasn't until later, and Ellis Island, later in the 1800s, we were having all the ones coming in, trying to get away from the pogroms in uh, Russia and uh, Eastern Europe, and trying to get into the States, and Ellis Island opened. Then that became the largest Jewish population in, in the United States, and from there, on over, you know. So it's quite amazing that there there's a museum in Atlanta called the uh, the Jews of the South. So um, uh, my what my great great grandmother came, and her name was she was Mary Levine, and she from what I understood from my grandmother that she came to know Yeshua. And I think about what she went through, and I look at where I am today, and because of a Jewish woman, I know she prayed over the generations. And I am where I am in the land of Israel, definitely, and also because of what the Word of God says, that that's where I'm to be. When Avi and I were married and we were coming home to Israel, my Jewish grandmother came up to me. She looked me in the eyes. She's probably about this tall. And she had those black eyes. She just looked at me, and she said, okay, because you're going to Israel with him, yeah. it's okay. And I had already, <laughs> and that was it. It was the word was spoken, and the word was good. So, <laughs> so um, the, uh, um, when, uh, Avi and I know someone came to me and said, we want to know how you and Avi met. I was a part of a campus ministry at the University of Florida. I was also a school teacher. And Avi came as a believer, born again believer. He came to that 
campus ministry. We had a, a congregation to it. It doesn't exist today. There, there was some, for whatever reasons, but anyway, um, so he was introduced as a born again believer from Israel. And so I said, oh, I, mean, I wanted to be him. I'm, I'm not going to say that I, I felt immediately that this was the man that I was going to marry because I rebuked it. But I went up to him because <laughs> I thought, well, I need to say shalom. At that point, I had already made plans to come to Israel. I was going to Beersheba, of all places. Beersheba, but never mind. Anyway, uh, so I came up and I said, I'm even the bad read kasat. I said, I spoke Hebrew to him. I said, I speak a little Hebrew. I need some words and study, you know, things. He goes, ah, oh, ooh, you know, he starts speaking. I said, no, no, we need to go back a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I know some words, <laughs> I know some things, but this is, let's just stop this now. And then he scared me uh, because his English was not quite as good then as it is now. Yeah, I, I, he's, uh, and all of a sudden he had his arm hand here and his hand here. And he looked at me and he goes, I have so much to tell you. I said, you do? I have so much to tell you. Okay. I have so much to tell you. Uh, okay. <laughs> I didn't know too much later. <laughs> I didn't know for much later that he was saying he knew that I was the one immediately. <laughs> he said the Lord spoke to him, and that's what he had so much to tell me. I didn't really say it then, but I'm like this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so anyway, I did it, and that was 39 years ago. Uh, in August this month, I made Aliyah to Israel. And so I, even though I have a strong American accent, um, my mentality is mamash Israeli. Um, I've spent more than half my life living uh, in the land where I know that God had intended for me to be. I do get in trouble when I go to the United States because I keep thinking if I had an accent, they'd be much more uh, merciful. But because there is no accent, and when I make do things, um, I used to go shopping in the Walmart, and the security people would be following me around the store, and then would go to the checkout with me. And so I, I could never understand what it was I was doing wrong in the store. So for, after that, I, after it happened uh, a lot of times, actually, you know that your security person who follows you and follows you to the checkout. <laughs> and so I said, "Okay, God." I said, "From now on, when I go into these stores, I'm going to look at everybody, see what they're doing, and I'm going to do it exactly like they're going to do it. They're doing it, and I, I'm very conscious. I push the cart, sit there with my hands. I look at it. Okay, they're doing this, and I'm going to be very watchful." to watch the American women how they shop to make sure that I did it correctly <laughs> and that I wouldn't be in trouble when I left. But anyway, that's okay. Enough of that. So um, anyway, the, the generations. So now we have girls that were born in the land of Israel. I could give you a lot of funny stories. Um, a lot of stories. I have so many stories. I can't even, it probably needs to be a book. I've told the girls they need to write it, to keep a record and write it, because um, I'm not sure that as an immigrant, I've had all the, the things that have happened, happened to even most immigrants. And I just think that it was the hand of God in many ways leading me, but I had these beautiful daughters. Um, and uh, so one of the things in my heart was that I would raise them Jewish, um, and uh, they would be raised Jewish, but they would know their Messiah, they would love their Messiah, Yeshua, and they would love the God of Israel, and they would love the land, and they would give to the land, that because that's where God had put us, and that's where we needed to be. And there was a responsibility we had to be that remnant in the land. But more than anything, that they also would love Yeshua, but that they, they would be 
Jewish in every way. So our home was a Jewish home. We had a Jewish home. And um, uh, so our girls, if, when they ask me, were they raised Christian? No, they were not raised Christian. They are not raised Christian. But they were raised to love their Messiah and give him their hearts and lives. Because we're, we see ourselves as a part of our land, a part of our community. Um, the rabbi in Al where we live, and we, even though the ministry is in Tel Aviv, everything's in Tel Aviv, because that's where all the people of Israel are in Tel Aviv. Uh, we don't live in Tel Aviv. We actually live in Samaria, the Shomron. We live in a, a settlement in the Shomron. And uh, it's a very strong Zionist settlement uh, because Chaya felt like I needed to experience what it meant to pioneer, you know. Um, so when we moved in the, uh, the mountain and God provided us to be able to buy our home there uh, many, year, many, many years ago, um, there was no electricity, no phone line for a year, and there was no cable for a year, and we had a generator with a uh, a uh, few houses were connected to, and at the, every time it, there wasn't enough of the generator, they'd knock on the door, and they'd tell me, turn off your air conditioner, and I'd go, I don't have one. So, <laughs> so we watched, we stood outside um, when the phone line, so I said, okay, God. And Avi used to do, it, when we started out, he used to do, besides doing his reserved duty in the IDF, because uh, what he had shared, he was in the Israeli Air Force for four years, and then when, you know, you do reserve duty. So when he did reserve duty, he shared the gospel with everyone. And he was in a war, uh, uh, he had a, a high security clearance. And this is back in the 80s. And so they turned, they said, brother, we really love you, but what you believe is, wow, we gotta turn you in because there's a security clearance. So he was taken from that to a fighting unit, and he was chasing terrorists in the Sharon uh, and Yehudave Sharon for the rest of his reserve duty into his 40s. So, and then we raised our girls to really want to serve in the idea. Now, today in Israel, in the land of Israel, this is very important. There are, in the believing community, Messianic Jewish community, are high officers. They're in elite units. They are some of the best soldiers in Israel. And they are doing amazing things and things that we can't stand up here and tell you because it, we can't, we just can't. But they are, I want you to know they're there. It's amazing how God is using them and how strong they are and the impact they're making in the IDF. And I, I, and I believe as we go forward that we're going to see God moving more and more. The rabbi where we live in our settlement loves this man right here. So, you know, with our girls, we didn't have any problem. They know the prayers of the synagogue. They know the songs of Kippur and Rosh Hashanah. So that our rabbi, not only does he know us, he knows what we believe. And uh, we had a, not long ago, our... Our, our doctor of the settlement, his wife passed away, and uh, we were all at the burial, and uh, he asked Avi to come stand, come up and read the TV, the Psalms with him. So this is something that God is doing. Even though we have an element that comes strong against us, there's also the opposite of that, and how we are part of the community. And this is what we try. We don't want to see our young people not a part of the Jewish community. We want them to see them, to see who they are, love the Messiah, but really give an input to the nation. So I am going to, um, I'm gonna ask my daughter to share. She has a beautiful testimony, but also what it was like to grow up. Because they grew up through the second intifada. And when we had shooting on our road and roadside bombs and tanks around our settlement and what it was to grow up, the whole settlement, by the way, they all know we're there. But they say we're good people, we're good neighbors. And that's what we want to be. We want to be good neighbors. You know? Okay. <laughs>